So what you will have remembered from your previous lesson is I've created a function that creates the layout of the board. If you need to go back to the previous video, it is there. But remember I said that we can actually use I for the row and then J for the column, all right? So what that's saying for each row, all right, I'm gonna use J to iterate through that row. That's what's happening there. If you need to look back at the previous video, it will help you, all right? So what we've got at the moment, if I make this slightly bigger, all right, so you can actually see what I've got working here, all right? So if I run this, I've managed to get it so that when I press one, one, and put an X in, it will place that, all right? Now, the problem with that at the moment is that is going to let me continue. It's only gonna let me place an item in it once. That means I need to add some form of iteration to this game that basically allows me to keep entering something in. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight this and I'm going to indent it, all right? The reason why I've indented it is because I'm going to put it in a while loop, all right? What I'm going to say is while, all right, counter is not equal to quit, and I'll explain how this works in a minute. While it's not equal to quit, it's going to say if I put in X or if I put in zero, in fact, that needs to, if I come back, let me undo this a second. I've missed out where this goes. I need to indent the whole thing, okay? Because I need to ask them what their counter is again, okay? So I've indented that and I'm gonna say while counter is not equal to quit, all right? It's going to continue asking me, all right? So by doing that, what that will allow me to do now is keep allowing me to add something to the board. So if I press run now, counter was equal to zero. I've just set that as that, as a kind of uh, Boolean more than anything. I know it's a string, but now if I press one and one and X, it will place that one and two and X. It places that in there, all right? Uh, one, and three, but actually I'm gonna put quit in there and it quits out the game, all right? So that was a while loop that is dependent on counter, all right? So if I typed in quit at that point, let's make it clearer. Type in quit if you want to end the game. So I'm gonna put that as a T there. So that's just a while loop that checks a similar condition. So it's helping you understand, remember that while loops will loop forever unless there is something that's changing a condition. So we've got here, counter is always changing because I'm always going to input something at the time. Now, here I said, if the counter is equal to an X or a zero, all right, it's going to place it, all right? That's not necessarily good. What I want to do, so the first part of this video is I want to make sure all right, so I'm going to hashtag this out. I want to ensure that I can't place in a symbol if there's something already there. So you're going to need to do an if statement. You're going to need to use selection to check whether something is already on your board. So this is where I'm going to say is uh, we're going to do another if statement in, inside when they put in X or O. All right. So if I say in here, if game board, in fact, I'm gonna use this bit of code here. Uh, let's copy this. All right, if game board is equal to X, all right, uh, minus one, or, is equal to zero, then print that position is already taken. Please try again. Else, then I can place it. All right, so the reason why I hashtag that out 
is because I'm going to put this up here. Now what this has done is it's put an if statement inside my loop. What this is going to do here is if there is already, so it, it knows the position that we're at, if whatever we've typed in in the game row and game column is equal to X or it's equal to O, it's going to say, I'm sorry, you've already put something in there. All right. Now, the other thing that we want to do outside this if statement here is we're going to put an else and we're going to say print invalid counter, please choose an X or an O. Now, my reason for that is because if it's not one of those counters, it's going to tell me it's invalid. All right. So if it's not one of those counters, all right, it's going to tell me it's invalid. So I've got two if statements going on here. One to check, first of all, if it's valid. And if it is valid, it's going to then check again another if condition that checks whether that position was already taken. So remember, that's where we can use nested ifs. Now, what some people might want to do is just not even check whether it's full. And you could even put in here another condition. You could use and to combine another condition, like one of these conditions here. All right. Now, let's run that. Check it works. So I'm going to go to position one and one and put in an X. Now, watch what happens this time if I put in a one and a one and an O, that position is already taken. So it then gets them to try again, all right? So that is part one of that. This is the next part of the video, all right? I'm gonna stop recording there. Then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can check whether or not they've got three in a row or not, all right?